Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Thirsty Thursday. Don't forget to water your plants. Um, having a rough morning. I'm alive, so there's my silver lightning. Um, the water heater went out, so waiting the right people to come and fix that. So this morning, usually I take my showers at night, so this morning I was like, I cannot take a shower at night and it be cold, it's going to wake me up. So this morning I washed my hair in the sink, <laughs> suds myself up in the shower and it was eye opener, that's for sure. And I'm already, you know, every morning I get up and I do my body assessment for the day of what what I can can and cannot do for the day. And um, I can feel the edema, but I've got um, acupuncture again today. I've scheduled two appointments now a week, and I, that was the right decision because I'm in bad shape. My, my head pain is not going away. It's constant now. So um, I just have to deal with it so I can drive myself to my acupuncturist appointment and then come back and then I can medicate myself. So just say some prayers that the pain doesn't get so unbearable that I can't stand it. But I look at it this way. I'm going. I need to go. I need, I need acupuncture because... It is helping, and it has helped. I mean, it's it's something so simple, yet has so many health benefits. And um, would have taken a shower outdoors in the hose, <laughs> but it's only seventy degrees this morning, and I thought it might be a little chilly. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? Which way do I go? Do I go outside and do it in the hose? <laughs> take a shower outdoors or just kind of improvise in here. Actually, I put a, a pot of water on the stove, which I need the moisture anyway with my sinuses and everything with the, all the pressure that's building up. So I originally started a pot on the stove thinking I was going to use that to bathe in, but, you know, I could have went to the neighbors. I could have done a million other things, but, you know, God tests you. And he's, boy, has he been testing me. I don't know if he's been testing you, but he's been testing me. And um, what would you do if you were in my situation? Just go without a shower for days or you just figure it out? But I feel clean. I feel like I actually feel cleaner than normal. <laughs> and normally I don't take hot showers anyway. It, they're usually lukewarm. So for me to have a cold shower... Yeah, it's pretty eye-opening, but it's not as drastic as, say, somebody that takes hot showers all the day, all, you know, all day, or every day when they take a shower. So, when you get in your shower, think about that. Think about the luxury of having hot water. I mean, it's a gift. There's people that don't have running water. There's people that don't get to take baths or showers every day. They just don't. And we all need to realize how grateful and blessed and thankful we all should be because of everything that we have in our houses that makes our lives that much easier every day. I've had multiple people in my house that have looked around in awe and I didn't realize I just assumed everybody had the same stuff. Why would I think otherwise? That's not what I was taught. That's not how what I was raised with. So why wouldn't I think everybody's seen a microwave before, a dishwasher, or a garbage disposal? Just saying. Look around your house and be extremely grateful and thankful because I know people overseas that share beds at night that their floor is a dirt floor they're lucky to find metal to piece together for a roof over their head 
All these things that we take for granted every day, they don't. And they're just trying to survive every day. And I can totally relate, because that's what I'm trying to do, keep myself alive every day. So I can figure out how I can help those people down the road when I do get better. That's what I do all day. I think about what I can do to help save this world because it's been so broken for so long. It's not just this administration. This one's just the worst. This one's just the worst. They found the wrong puppet. That's all. They found the wrong puppet to do their dirty work and he's failing miserable. Because the rest of us, we've been smart long enough. So, anyway, so back to my Thirsty Thursday devotion for January the 13th. <laughs> the homework assignment, since I had my long intro, I'm not sure I'm going to do the homework assignment, but we'll see how I feel. First Peter 3, verses 1 through 17 and Psalm 63. Well, you know, it's kind of hard not to read it since I've been reading them. <laughs> so, First Peter, and I turn right to Matthew, 3, verse 1 through 17. So, let's just, it's easier for me to just, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Roman. Okay, well, where is, this, this will show you how well I know my Bible. It's not, not too, not too great. But I'm learning. I should just mark the page. Let's do Psalms. Psalm 63. That's easy. I know where Psalms are. <laughs> I just turned right to it, of course. <laughs> I can't even make it up. Okay, so Psalm 63. My soul thirsts for you. My hair's drip drying, so it's a hot little disaster. I decided, you know what? We're going to just use all natural today. My soul thirsts for you, a psalm of David, when he was in the wilderness of Judah. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. <laughs> no doubt. There's a lot of that out there in this world. And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exalt. For the mouths of liars will be stopped. Wouldn't that be nice? Like truly, the mouths of liars to be stopped. I'm still trying to go through my scriptures in my head of where exactly Peter is. And um, with my head, oh, there we go. I was like, I think it's back in the back by revelations. I don't know why. And <laughs> there I am. <laughs> okay, so 1 Peter 3. Okay, so 1 Peter 3. Okay, verses 1 through 17. Okay, here we go. Wives and husbands. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, 
so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. When they see a respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be eternal. Okay, that ripping noise in the background is Hannah. She's just having a blast with one of her toys, just shredding it to shreds, <laughs> ripping it to shreds. <laughs> Do not let your adorning be eternal. The abrading of hair and the putting on gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which in God's sight is very precious. <laughs> For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed O Abraham, calling him Lord, and you are her children, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the women as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Wow, that was, that was pretty powerful. Wowzers. Suffering in righteousness, for righteousness' sake. 1 Peter 3, verse 8. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Is too. Wow. Do not repay evil for evil or reveling for reveling, but on the contrary, bless for to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who reveal your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame, for it is better to suffer for doing good. If that should be God's will, then be doing evil, then for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. I'm going to read a couple more because this is important, I can tell. Baptism, <laughs> which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. So, may not need a Jiminy Cricket if you read the Bible. He'll give you your conscience instead. A Jiminy Cricket is a good way to start, don't you think? Just a thought. 
So, back to our devotion. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another in Christ. In God in Christ, has God in Christ forgave you? Ephesians 4, verse 32. The vibration helps with um, edema. Apparently, it helps with your um, the vibration. I, I've been reading up on it, and so I, I mean, no wonder this has been helping me with the edema so much. This Christmas gift, a gift that keeps on giving. I'm using it in a different in a different um, light, and it's working so much better. Back to our devotion. Today's title is tender how perfect is that i have a tender heart i have a voice i had a big huge soft heart this is what it is that's my gift it's been my gift from him and my gift to the world so anybody that meets me hopefully has always felt my heart that's always been my intention to just tell them that we all have love to share it's just who i am a hand reaching out to the stroke to stroke a cheek in love, or a finger running, running along the same cheek to wipe away a tear. When I think of tenderness, these images come to mind. Tenderness is never aggressive or selfish. <laughs> it always recognizes a vulnerability in the other person how easily we can hurt another, or how much someone has already been wounded, beaten to death at times, but still surviving. Let it go and let it flow. Being tender also means being vulnerable, being selfless and kind in a way that doesn't fear being wronged. In 1 Peter 3, wives and husbands are encouraged to show such tenderness with each other, which is a form of trusting service. When did people forget that? This chapter encourages Christians to be tender with, other pe- with all people, meeting oppression with kindness and weakness with empathy. This tender-hearted concern for others provides a doorway for the gospel. When we care about broken people so personally and completely, our words of faith matter more to them as well. True story. I've seen that even more so lately. How tender is God with us? He doesn't force his way into our hearts, but comes gently and humbly. He grieves for our pain. And he made himself vulnerable to death on the cross. Embracing this chance to show us tender mercy we did not deserve. Seeing our brokenness, he reaches out to us and says, You are mine. And you are loved. Thank you, God, for your tender-hearted compassion for us that heals our brokenness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So take your little tender hearts, and if your heart isn't tender, maybe you can figure out how you can soften it up, soften that outer shell of yours, so that you too can spread love and kindness everywhere, like I do and others do, every day to make your life that much easier. Like that waitress or waiter at the restaurant that went above and beyond and didn't just serve you their food, but made you feel like you it mattered, or that person at the gas station that opened the car door for you, or opened the, the door going into the convenience store, or just said good morning. Something as simple as good morning can really make someone's day. And when I used to go to Starbucks in Indiana, I saw that a lot. I saw people going there for that that little glimpse of hope for the day. 
that one thing that really put that spark in their life and that spring in their step and made them happy. And what what put a bump in their road getting there or um, took their joy out of their day? You never know because everybody fights a battle in their own lives and they keep it inside. So think about that as you go through your day and try to bring joy and share your light when this world is so dark. We need a lot more light being spread everywhere. So, it's Thirsty Thursday, water your plants. I love that. A great friend, Sandra D. That was her. She said, shared that with me and it's stuck. I love it. So anyway, have a great day. Say some prayers for me and others in the world that have health issues that every day we do our body assessments and figure out how we're going to tackle the rest of the day. Some days, and I'm, I'm still drying. This is, <laughs> went through a whole nother round of these yesterday. Different colors, different, it's not going away. So um, I had to order some supplies because I'm running out of my medium, <laughs> which has been kind of fun. At least it gives me something to fill in during the day when I can't do other things that most normal people can do. So, anyhow, have a great day. Bye. Love you.